Good morning. We're talking about uh, this uh, course. It's a mandatory course on ethics and world religions. Most people uh, love it. Most uh, people and most religious groups have not put up a fight with a few small exceptions. One of those exceptions uh, were uh, a group of Catholic parents who were upset. So is this course an assault on parents' ability to raise their children as Catholics or Buddhists for that matter? We'll stick to the former for now. Joanne McGarry is executive director of the Catholic Civil Rights League uh, with her reaction to the Supreme Court court ruling. Uh, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very well, thank you. The Supreme Court ruling is basically saying that uh, it's okay, there's nothing wrong with teaching uh, kids this mandatory school course, and that it is not an assault on uh, the ability of Catholics to raise their children as, uh, as Catholics. What do you say to that? Uh, well, and we have to bear in mind, too, that the, d the decision did say that the um, um, infringement on religious freedom was unproven. Uh, two of the uh, justices made a point of saying that, you know, with better evidence in the future, it may, that may turn out to be the case. But for the time being, yes, that the, the course is neutral and it does not interfere with the parents' right to raise their children. Um, my reaction to that is that it's, uh, there's very little chance you know, anyone's ever going to come up with a course about religion that suits everybody. I mean, religion is one of those subjects that people, that's very important to people, first of all. Their beliefs are important to them. And second of all, uh, people have different beliefs, and it's one of those things that people are always going to disagree about. So I think, um, in, you know, in a, where, where freedom of religion is valued, I think any course of uh, teaching religion is uh, going to have to include a provision for exemption for, for those parents who seek it, uh, you know, perhaps with a, an expectation that they'll have to establish that the material is being taught at home or in some other way. I mean, there are are a lot of different ways to approach this. I think uh, quite often we do suffer from this attitude that it must be either or. Now, what about the, the, the situation? I was stunned at this. Uh, first, they wanted to take religion out of the schools. Uh, they did. They took it out of the schools. Then they put it back in with this specific uh, secular fundamentalist view that they're all just the same, you know, like you can pick a you know, a brown yeah. jacket or a blue jacket. They're all interchangeable. They're all pretty much meaningless, but here they are. Strictly from a, a cultural point of view, they're all the same, whether it's native spirituality or Catholicism or mm -hmm. Buddhism. It's all, all the same. Uh, and they don't mention the fact that they he heavily contradict one another in, in many cases. Mm -hmm. What did you think when you heard that uh, about the Loyola case, when they said, we'll teach the course? Uh, it's a Catholic private school. We'll teach it from a Catholic point of view, and the Quebec government told, said, no, you can't do that. Uh, yeah, well, that, that case is under appeal right now. Um, I thought that was um, a good option to look at, that they basically they offered to say we'll include the course, but we want to teach it from a, a Catholic standpoint, and then, then presumably, have, you know, as a, as a private school, I would imagine they have relig a religion program as well, so it would be part of a bigger picture. Now, Joanne, don't you think that, in a way, when, when you consider the impact of this course, this one-size-fits-all, that it's government bureaucrats, for the most part, who really don't care about religion one way or the other, who decide what's taught, who decide how it's taught, not only in the public school system, but in the private one, in Catholic schools, Muslim schools, Jewish schools, they make that decision. It's part of the fault that... Apathy. In other words, most of these religious groups just didn't even put up a, a fight about it. They figured they'll find a way around the law. Oh, yeah. No, I find that with a, a great many school questions, uh, the you know Department of Education or school board or whoever it is in the given case, they'll say, oh, yes, well, you know, we have only introduced this after the widest possible consultation. Well, the, the wide consultation is usually only within the education community. I, you know, you don't hear too often of parents being asked or of... Um, or of the, you know, the wider community being invited into it. And um, that said, I mean, we, we always come to, uh, or we quite often, I should say, come to a question of whether this right to have, you know, how, um, how guaranteed is this right to an exemption? Well, um, you know, in the, the part of Toronto where I live, the reality is that most teachers have never received a single request, so how do we know? <laughs> okay. Know? Now, you're, you're the executive director of the Catholic Civil Rights League. Yeah. How, do you, how, do you feel, how do you feel about a course that presents characters, like just as, as another fictional character? Mm -hmm. No, I think, it's, um, I think it's, that's inappropriate, especially at the, um, at the younger ages. Uh, say uh, around second grade, where that's us usually um, first communion preparation. Um, that's not material that you would that you would have and that you would expect to see in the classroom when when they're also 
when they're also undergoing a process of sacramental preparation um, at a later age, you know, part of a, a certain type of literature course or sociology course or something, that might be different. But um, I know the parents in this case, and they are quite uh, well-read, reasonable people. I mean, they're not, uh, you know, if this course was an option in high school, I doubt you ever would have heard from them. Okay, it's because it's an elementary school. Now, why? It's it, elementary and it's mandatory. That was what they really objected to. I think if they, if they, the exemption had been granted, I think that would have been that. Now, what is? Uh, why did your organization, the Catholic Civil Rights League, why did it decide to, to be an intervener in this case? Well, because the, um, the a parent's right to direct the religious education of their child is um, as a fundamental right that is, is part of our freedom of religion. Um, that the right of the parents is specified in a number of, of international documents from, from the UN. Um, it's recognized in the um, in Canadian, the, you know, in the, in the Charter of Rights and in the Quebec Charter. I mean, it's um, this is a well-established concept that the that the parents are the first educators of their children. So what 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 can they do? What can these uh, parents do? It doesn't matter if they're in public school, private school, Catholic school. Uh, mm. What can they do? They just have to go along with it. Uh, well, there is. Um there is the uh, the window was left open that if better evidence is produced in the future, it may well turn out that the course interferes with um, with the family's autonomy. So uh, they can they can undertake that process. Um, that maybe they can work. Um, if I were if it were me, I would tr- I would try to work with a school board to improve the course as well. Like maybe there's some adaptations that can be made. Again, as I say, we often, you know, we fall into this trap of thinking either or. I mean, yes, I do think the right to an exemption is fundamental in any program about religion, but that's not to say that the program couldn't be improved. And uh, maybe they could go back. I, mean, I think up to a couple of years ago, you you had a choice of uh, of Catholic, Protestant, or non-religious courses, and most of the parents seemed happy with that. I think 78% chose the Catholic. So there's um, there are things that could be done, but uh, to to stay strictly with the effect of this ruling, I would say, um, yeah, work with with your children and with the school and gather some evidence. And if if you're still convinced, you know, if you if that if with that evidence you um, you see a religious freedom and parental rights infringement, uh, try it again. Apply for the exemption again. They didn't say it was denied, uh, that it was denied completely. They just said the case was unproven in this instance. Once again, you're as executive director of the Catholic Civil Rights League, uh, how did you feel about uh, having an alliance with uh, uh, an atheist association? They didn't like this course uh, either, and they felt that atheist parents, they think the whole thing is bunk. They don't believe in any, in any of it, in any religion. They don't believe in God, obviously. And uh, they feel that their rights are being infringed upon, that they should have a right to withdraw uh, from this course as well. And yeah. They don't think this course should be taught, period. Well, I think if you're, if you're getting that much op- opposition from that wide a group, um, it, it should be a wake-up call that something is wrong here. That it's, um, I think I mentioned earlier, it's, it's really impossible um, to introduce a course on religion that everybody's going to like. So if there's to be a course on religion, which I think is a good thing. I mean, this course is not all bad. It does at least acknowledge that religion is important to people. And um, but you're, you need um, a parental right to an exemption um, if you're going to offer a course in religion, but also respect freedom of religion. Okay, I thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you. Would my-